Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kingmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got for you from Tamiya the new kit Russian self-propelled gun SU-76M in 135th scale. This is a brand new tooling kit, never been released by Tamiya before. Um, says on the box here, detailed static display model accurately captures 76SU-76M <laughs> form with open top fighting compartment. Authentic gun depiction is movable thanks to poly caps. Assembled tire type tracks, assembly type tracks feature one piece straight sections and jig for construction. Comes with three figures for fighting compartment and two marking options. All right, so they do show some some various uh, graphics on the side here for for decals and so forth. It says to me, colors TS28, so pretty standard one color scheme there. They show some of the figures here on the side all painted and done, um, so those look pretty nice as well. Let's go ahead and crack her open, shall we? Alright, so inside we can see right off the bat the first sprue is the figures. Um, I'm guessing these are unique figures for this kit and haven't been released before. We'll take a look at the the, uh, the stamps on them to just kind of check their dates and so forth when we're looking. Uh, then there is a larger sprue set here with some, uh, looks like, internal compartment, uh, fighting compartment parts, and a clear sprue, and uh, yeah, we'll get a better look at that in a minute too. And here's some of the hull, uh, lower hull, side hull pieces, and gun barrel, looks like a one-piece gun barrel, and plastic. Um, another sprue with more of the interior, I think, uh, fighting compartment and back sections of the, uh, they call it SPG on the box, and then that's odd. Uh, self-propelled gun. Yeah, I guess so. All right, it's a tank destroyer, obviously, but it is a, still a self-propelled gun. Um, usually, I think of those as artillery pieces, but uh, silver-ish uh, looking tow line in here, and uh, again, nice. Uh, looks like some nice detail. Then we get into the running gear, and I think the tracks are included here on the parts of the running gear. This is this is kind of new. Never seen a manufacturer uh, do this, where they've got the tracks actually built into the regular kit production. Uh, we usually always seem to have the tracks as a separate uh, bit. And then finally we've got um, a decal sheet here, which we'll again get a better look at in a minute. There will be photos at the end of the review too if you're not familiar with how these work. Uh, there are always photos towards the end, so if you're not patient about the unboxing portion, you can always skip ahead and see the plastic. Although, again, I'm no expert on this uh, vehicle, so, or not again, but again, as in, if you watch my reviews, you'll know I am not proficient in knowing all the ins and out details of every single vehicle that I uh, review on this channel because they include pretty much everything armor, aircraft, ships, uh, rocket ships, uh, cars, and so forth and so on so I challenge you to find somebody who's an expert in all those things. Uh, Alright, let's uh, go ahead and start opening these up. You can see the instruction manual again, kind of the standard uh, Tamiya affair. Let's take a look at that first though. Um, I'm going to uh, make nods to Adam Mann, who actually kind of does this in his reviews, and I, I think it actually is a good idea, because I always look at the instructions after I've looked at the plastic, and that sometimes is kind of counterproductive. So well, let's look at the instructions first. Adam, you, you got the you got the right idea on this 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 uh, this concept, anyways. All right, so let's uh, again a pretty much standard to me uh, looking uh, layout. Uh, obviously, usually very easy to follow and so forth. Uh, looks like they're starting you out with uh, some some of the hull parts uh, to start with, with the gun shield, I believe, there, at least the, the front gun mount area. And then that's going to go into the hull, and then they have some of the ammunition racks as well being installed and assembled. Um, more ammunition racks, more side hull pieces. You know, it shouldn't be an overly complex kit. Obviously, the tracks are going to be a big portion of this. Um, Basically, by step 15 here, we've got the whole uh, hull assembly done, and we're going, moving on to the the lower suspension bits. Looks like they have a kind of a single uh, insertion kind of scenario here going on. I'm not sure those will be positionable, prob probably, if you want to change up the track, um, you know, look and so forth. Uh, they show the jig here, which is an interesting uh Affair obviously kind of has a, a little bit of a, a, a dip effect to it for the upper tracks. So they've already got you basically setting these up. So 
Um, so you'll glue these in position, I assume. Let me see. Just double check here. Make straight. Uh, before cement dries. Yeah. So so basically, you're cementing these tracks in place. They're, they're giving you the the positions of say the the you know the the uh, sag and so forth. Uh, but that's interesting that they made the jig that way. So um, probably a smart idea. Uh, and then moving on, again, lots of small detail bits going on to the hull, and then we have the gun assembly. It's uh, interesting the gun going in last, obviously, uh, but that's kind of makes sense for this kit. You can see it's, it's a pretty big affair, the, the whole gun assembly with uh, housing and everything. And uh, tow cable uh, markings, crewmen, um, I don't really show those, like, the way the, I don't think they showed those the way they went together, but it's pretty straightforward, obviously. Uh, looks like they've got markings for at least two units. Um, so an A and a B. One is Berlin 1945, uh, Horse District, and the first one was 11th Guard, Self-Propelled Artillery Battalion, East Prussia 1944. Did they use these as artillery? I mean, I know the gun probably does articulate quite a bit upward. I mean, I, I, this to me always uh, felt like a tank destroyer. I mean, um, I could read the little intro here thing a little bit just to kind of answer that question for myself. But uh, let's see. Um, lacking firepower, Soviet forces were somewhat less prepared than their German foes after Operation Barbarossa swung into action on, in June 1941. One example being the lack of self-propelled anti-tank gun. Okay, well, that says tank destroyer, obviously. Uh, but it's interesting that they, obviously, they, I guess that's the way the Soviets broke down their the units was probably tanks and not tanks. All right, well, as we know, we can open these with just little staples. I don't need my, don't need my trusty scissors, I don't think. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this one first, because this is the interesting one with the tracks, and it also has the, the track guide here, you can see. Um... Give some contrast there against the black. I know sometimes this isn't the best color to use, especially with dark parts like this. Um, let me fix that real quick. Dun 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 dun. I don't know why I just don't use this. I will now use this all the time. This makes total sense now. Uh, <laughs> so um, you can see there's one long track piece. I assume this is the bottom. Uh, so they're, you're going to do basically the the top as individual track links and the you know parts going around the sprocket and the guide uh, wheel, um, and uh, that's an interesting way to do it. So yeah, and we've got the I think these are the full uh, ammunition rounds here. At least these are. I don't, I'm not sure why that one's missing a, a bit on the end. Uh, some weapons in here, um, all suspension bits and tow cables. But those all look good, and I'm sure you'll be able to see those better in the photos. Let's take a look at... There's a little bit of a grommet part there, too. So here's the tow cable, which is a very long tow cable. My goodness, that is very long. Maybe there's two tow cables there. I don't know. Um... Here is some of the, uh, I think, interior fighting compartment and top, or front, uh, actually I'm not sure, that's not the front, I think that's the front of the frontal armor. Um, they've got the side uh, skirts uh, in two different sections. This one's broken up into two parts, it looks like. And uh, again, you know, typical to me quality. I could check the printing dates on these. Let me just see what these say they were, because they always seem to add these. Sorry for going off screen on you, but I don't know to find them. Where is the dates? I'm sure they're here. Uh, they are not here. Interesting. To me, it stopped putting the dates on there. Yeah, I don't see them anywhere. I don't even see Tamiya on here anywhere, which is kind of odd. I mean, normally, they definitely stick their brand right here on the sprue. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. What about this one? No, I don't see it on this one either. <laughs> hmm, this is... Uh, oh, wait, no, I, no, I see it here. I see it here. To me, a 2016. And the part number and so forth. I wonder why they didn't do it on this one. Did I just miss it, maybe? Oh, I did, I did. Well, I was blind. Yeah, this one's to me in 2016 as well. Uh, I'm blind, I'm blind. That's the excuse. I'm sticking with it. 
and um, moving on this piece which has the hull bits um, see a little bit of interesting kind of flow marks here um, but otherwise oops and I hit the camera never good don't hit the camera Jim um, some nice well you know some nice uh, actually uh, rivet detail I guess or bolt detail whatever that is so these two pieces going together again nice small detailed bits down here hopefully get the light right Maybe I should open my blinds a bit get more light um, I think really this is some of the gun um, portions here where the maybe the, the gun um, mount is and moving on to the next one this is the one that has the the clear included with it and again some nice uh, small parts here tools uh, more of the gun mechanism um, you know just uh, it's a Soviet tank there's you know it's <laughs> it's a machine they, sometimes they you know not to not to knock them they, they look like they're basically like like a tractor or something you know, <laughs> just got, they got lots of metal parts in them they, you know it's, there's nothing really sticking out going like oh wow that's cool looking uh, I think this is one of the reasons that you know not that we're like Nazi lovers or anything but why sometimes German tanks get all this the sexy you know applause is because they just they tend to have the kind of cool looking stuff on them you know same thing's true for Shermans I mean Shermans are very utilitarian and so forth they don't they don't have that you know that sexy look now I'm not that said there are definitely some Russian tanks like the say the IS-3 or JS-3 or whatever you call it um, but the uh, the IS-3 definitely has a has a has a very very cool look to it and so does some of their uh, like the object 704 and so forth their, their tank destroyer uh, anyways, these figures look very good. I don't know if you're getting, looking at these while I'm yabbering on here, but uh, but yeah, they look very nice. I look that the I'm seeing some texturing on these figures that looks way way different than I've ever seen a plastic figure look. I mean, they've got like microfolds on this thing. Now I'm not sure how that's going to come off once painted and so forth, but I think it you know it looks good. Who's ever doing their figures now is definitely um, this 2016 stamp as well so this is new definitely on the right track here um, you know because uh, I'll put up I'll try to put up quite a few photos of these you guys can take a look in the photo section but yeah I'm, I'm seeing really really impressive uh, mold work here with the figures <laughs> so I got excited about the figures all right well you know think, go figure all right here's the uh, the clear which I think I won't open it's just mostly um, some lights and other lens bits I'll do a photo of that obviously and then lastly the decals which again probably are not very sexy just basic markings and so forth uh, if any of you guys play War Thunder you probably know it's like you can make your Soviet tanks look really cool in War Thunder because you can you can make them all pretty with various different uh, things that the Russian tanks never would have had on them camo you know, that, I, that's another good example. Some German tanks had all the sexy camo. All right, well, that uh, is the the unboxing portion. Let's look to, uh, go on to the photo taking and displaying portion because I haven't taken the photos yet, obviously. So we'll we'll come back in a minute though and conclude.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the photos of the brand new Tamiya SU76M. I should uh, have a footnote that usually I get these kits quite a bit in advance of them coming out. Um, uh, they've been released basically at this point, so you probably find them maybe in Japan usually, uh, but they're not actually like they haven't arrived on the boats yet, so they're on their way. You know, like whatever. <laughs> so, um, so they may be this may this kit may be several weeks, if not a month or more out, so uh, depending on when this review is published on YouTube, uh, don't get frustrated if you can't find it yet, it will be out at some point soon. So start planning, get your your diorama or other ideas, you know, uh, what you're going to put this with or whether you, what scheme you're going to do and so forth and how you're going to tackle these, these figures because uh, they look like they're going to come out really well. So. Um, thanks to, to uh, Timmy USA for providing this uh, sample copy, we will of course be most likely passing this on to someone to do a full build and a build review or feature work with. Um, I don't think we've gotten a request yet because uh, I did put this out yesterday with my uh, mail call video. But uh, so you know, act quickly if you would like to be the person who who does this uh, for us. Uh, and all that information is in one of my other videos. I'm not going to go through that whole spiel again. People are like, no, 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 don't go through the whole spiel. Yes, I won't. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like or a thumbs up or comment or whatever you'd like, and we will see you next time on Cracking the Box.